Shalom. Welcome to the Messianic Hour with Rabbi Scott Sekulow. The Messianic Hour is a program designed to give you insight into the Jewish roots of your faith. Rabbi Scott is also here to answer your questions and help you gain a deeper understanding of Bible prophecy. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Scott Sekulow. Shalom and welcome to another edition of the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. The show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. I'm here with my wife, Judy, as we come to you each week bringing a perspective of the Scripture from a Jewish and Gentile perspective. And this will give us a deeper understanding of the Word. I was raised in a traditional Jewish home, came to know the Lord in the 1990s, and have been sharing my faith ever since. My wife was raised a good Southern Baptist girl and uh, came to know her Jewish roots and uh, has really has that heart of Ruth faith in it, and we're excited that you're joining us, not only over the radio, but you can actually watch us. We record this show, so you can watch us on YouTube, uh, Cross TV. Uh, let's see, I'm I'm forgetting Vimeo. Vimeo. Uh, we also have the Roku channel, which is the Messianic channel. You can check that out. And watch us also on our website, RabbiScott.com. You can watch previous uh, shows as well. We also have our uh, app for both the Droid and the Apple products, so you can check that out as well and sign up. We also you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at, at Rabbi underscore Scott as the Twitter account. We're glad you're with us. We have a great show in store for you. We're going to be looking at what is in the name. We're going to be uh, looking through Genesis chapter 44, verse 47, uh, the comparing Joseph with Yeshua. And we're really going to be emphasizing their names, not only their Hebrew names, but uh, in Joseph's case, his uh, Egyptian name. Uh, in Yeshua's case, we're going to be looking at both his Hebrew name, his English name, and Greek name. So we're going to get really into that. Uh, and it's going to be a great topic, and we're glad you're with us. And we also want to remind you, too, we are doing a trip to Israel June 9th through the 19th. This is going to be a great trip. It's out of Atlanta, round trip. But if you're not in Atlanta, we can get you from wherever you are. But the neat thing about this trip is we are getting this year's prices. It will not be a price increase uh, we're charging the same price we charged last year, which is really uh, just amazing because you always have gas prices going up and just normal inflation usually costs like three to four hundred dollars more. But we were able to tie it in with our tour company and they're guaranteeing 2013 prices. That means you can go to Israel with us for thirty nine ninety nine. That includes all transportation from Atlanta round trip. Includes uh, your meals, breakfast, and dinner. Lunch is the only thing you have to pay for. Includes all the taxes. We don't nickel and dime people to death. The only thing you have to pay for is lunch, the tip for the guide and the driver, and whatever money you want to spend in the land. And trust me, you can spend a lot there. It's a lot of great stuff. Uh, Judy and I are still getting boxes from when we were over there. We had some stuff shipped over. And uh, it is a great opportunity. So check that out, RabbiScott.com. For more information, you can do it to mail at RabbiScott.com. And right after the break, we're going to be looking at what's in a name. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Messianic Hour. Welcome back to the Messianic Hour. I'm Judy Seculo, and I'm glad that you're watching us and listening with us. And most importantly, most importantly, you're studying along That's with right. us because, you know, we're here to teach. And as we, re- we say, we want to reach the lost and educate the found, but we can only do part of the job. We can only give you things to think about, but you have to go in and read it for yourself. You have to dig into your Bible. It's not just enough that we sit here and pontificate to you but we we need you to get out your bibles open them up i know we've been on genesis 44 through 47 for quite a while we're but gonna end it this week there's I a lot of stuff there and we you know it's it's so funny and i think that's you know you have all these cycles of read the bible through the year read the bible through the year and, and, and a lot of people do that 
But you know what? I think it's important that you continually reread scripture because there's always going to be something that's going to pop out and jump at right. you and go, wow, I don't remember that. Or, wow, that, that, that means because your understanding has increased, you may read something and go, wow, that, that totally has a new revelation right. to me now. You know, Judy, you bring up a point because a lot of people read the Bible, but you need to study it too. And, and that's really what makes a difference. You, you and I, during the break, we were talking uh, about a story that we're going to talk about in the second half of the show. And immediately it came to mind when you start saying it. I haven't told you this yet, but there's a prophecy that's being fulfilled with that event that's called a teaser on the show, but there'll be a great opportunity. But you're right. You know, when you start reading the word and studying it, it makes a big difference. And that's really what we're seeing in this chapter. And what is in a name? Because in Judaism, a name isn't just a name. You know, you know, my name's Scott. What does that mean? It doesn't really mean anything, you know, to us. But the your Hebrew name, and even other languages, other nationalities like Egypt, Egyptian names have meanings. And so I think we need to look at these two uh, people, these two names, specifically Joseph's name, both in his uh, Hebrew name and his uh, Egyptian name. And Yeshua and his names, including Emmanuel. So we're going to take a look at that to really get an understanding of what's going on. But before I do that, you know, when our opening music was from Paul Wilbur. Yes. And I want to remind everyone, July the 27th at 7, a, uh, 7 p.m., the Saturday night, Paul Wilbur will be in concert here in Atlanta. Now, the tickets are sold out. We're, we're already packed to the gill. But you can watch online. You cannot watch. It won't be recorded because of uh, legal stuff. But they are allowing us to do it live. So 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come and enjoy Paul Wilbur with us in concert. You'll be truly blessed by not only his music, but by his ministry and what he's doing. So let's now get into the scripture, Judy. First of all, let's uh, look at his uh, Egyptian name. And that, that's given to us in Genesis chapter 41, verses 45. And you know what? My little teaser about read your Bible, we're going to let you read it because I can guarantee you that if I try to pronounce it, I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> so pull your Bibles out. Genesis chapter... I was chapter, hoping you were going to say I know you were. So see, I just threw it right back at you. I knew where you were going with that. That's actually 24 years of marriage. You knew me, huh? Yes, yes, I do. Twenty-four so, years, honey, a long, and and we work together. So it's twenty-four years, twenty-four seven, three sixty-five. Yes. So yes, I knew where you were going with that. So I threw it right back. So get it, your I think Bible. It's, it's, it's Zephaniah, uh, but it is definitely a, a an Egyptian a he, name. E Egyptian name. But what it really it's it, even though we can't pronounce the name, we can figure out what it means, and that's the more important part. And it really it says it, it, his name uh, really denotes he reveals things that are his hidden and easily declares them. And if you think about just Joseph, that's what he did in Egypt. You know, he, he was the interpreter of, right, of dreams. Right, he was a dream, you know, interpreter of dreams. He understood what God's calling was, He and he remained faithful to God through all that. And, and so we see that is one thing with it, even in his, his English name and his Egyptian name, that we have this understanding. The rabbis tell us that his name is really an abbreviation that stands for Zoheph, Z-O-F-E-H, which means seer, redeemer, interpreter, uh, skilled, understanding, and seer. So we, we really see how this comes together of who he was, his characteristic that he was. And, and so that's important as we focus in on these names, because most of these names uh, have to do with the fact that Joseph was gifted by God to discern his will through the dream interpretation. And I think it's interesting that most likely Joseph was given his Egyptian name prior to these events happening. Right. So, again, just another way of God kind of setting everything up. He's given a, an Egyptian name that reveals characteristics that he really had. Right. Now, we, we also have to make one note here. The letter J in Hebrew actually has a Y sound. So it also would be, uh, instead of Joseph, it's Yosef. Correct. Um, so for those who are going to be emailing us saying it's not J, it's Y, we understand that. But how we say it in English. We're speaking common English. Comes out yeah. Joseph, just like Jerusalem 
it is Yerushalayim. Yeah. So we understand all that, but that's how it all comes together. So I think because we've looked at Joseph's name, we now need to see how does that relate to Messiah. And there are several names. There's a lot of names right. given to Messiah. We're just going to pick and choose a few of them that we're going to touch on today. But the first one, as we, as we talk about all the time, is he, his name means salvation or to save. Right. Um, again, we get... Jesus is the English version of the Greek Isus, which became Jesus in the Latin Bible, and I know the J. And anyway, his Hebrew name. His parents were Hebrew speakers. His Hebrew name was Yeshua, right? And that means salvation. Right now, here's the interesting thing: the best English equivalent we have to this name is Joshua. Joshua. So we see again the connection of this name. Uh, and how it would come into play. So basically, we also see how this name uh, Joshua is an, a, another form of where Yeshua comes from. So it's that root base of it. And again, like you said, it means salvation or to save. What is the characteristics, characteristic of our Messiah? He came to what? Save. To save. And that's Redeem. exactly what we see happening here. But now here's an interesting thing, Judy. What is that? The, when the angel comes to Mar- Miriam, he says, and your child shall be named Yeshua. Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel, not Yeshua. So what is the difference? Again, the, prophet, the, the prophet's dealing with, I'm not sorry, the prophet, the angel's dealing with his characteristics. What does the word Emmanuel mean? Mighty God. Prince of Peace, God is with us, Mighty Counselor. Uh, these, again, are all characteristics of Messiah. And we also know that in addition to Yeshua, uh, Matthew informs us that the incarnation could also be referring to uh, as Emmanuel. literally means it's a title of God dwelling among us. It's that promise that he's given us. And we see that this refers to the prophecies in Isaiah chapters 7 through 9. So again, get your Bibles out and turn to Isaiah and read chapters 7 through 9. And in these chapters, the prophet spoke of one called Emmanuel, who would be the possessor of the promised land. And moreover, Judy, this Emmanuel would also be the king of Israel, and he was described as the father to eternity. Matthew was telling us, that Yeshua was this promised Emmanuel, which literally is translated mean God with us. And Judy, what's really interesting, we're going to bring this over to the next um, segment because we have several other names to do. But what's really interesting is when we see his name, Emmanuel, God with us, where do we, we see our Messiah being born? At Sukkot. What is Sukkot? It, the meaning of that is God dwelling among us. We see him coming once again with this picture. It's a beautiful image of our Messiah and what was it supposed to be about. And we know that when he returns the second time, he is going to come as the king of Israel and right. as the possessor of the land. Right. So he had two different, you know, there's, there's two different purposes to the two different comings. And the first one was to save redeem the second one is to come you know and that was the servant messiah the second one is the king messiah right. and that's when we see the full revelation and, and this is and, and so people understand too in judaism this is a very common understanding that there would be they, they would say there would be two messiahs one messiah ben joseph and one messiah ben david one coming in peace the other coming is ruler and king. And we know that Messiah Yeshua is both Messiah ben Joseph and Messiah ben David. Uh, and he plays those roles, both the first coming and the second coming, all together. We're going to look at some of the other names, especially the Son of Man, when we get back after the break, as we want to finish this out, because it's so important to understand the names of God and how he uses these names to reveal to the world that he is truly Messiah, Son of Man, the King of Israel. I want to encourage you to go to our website, rabbiscott.com. Remember, we are a listener-supported show. You can support us right there online. You can sign up for our newsletter. Uh, Again, rabbiscott.com. You can also plant a tree in Israel and bless this ministry and bless the land. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this break. No. 
Welcome back to the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. I was getting into the music there. I love that reggae-style Messianic music. As he chair dances. Uh, that's right. It reminds me when we were on the boat on the Sea of Galilee with Danny... Uh, ben Carmel. Ben Carmel. And uh, he was a great, uh, great time of uh, worshiping right there on the Sea of Galilee. We had a concert there. He is the only uh, Jewish believer who does boat rides and... Uh, it's the only one we use because, man, it's not just a, a trip on the Galilee. It is an amazing experience. Now, Judy, during the break, uh, we during the last segment, we didn't finish the what is in a name. So I want to go on to that because we, we don't really see Yeshua calling himself Messiah. And there's a reason for that is the fact that the term Messiah really was more of a political understanding instead of a... Uh, religious connotation, but he does use a word, son of man. So why don't you explain some of that? Well, that's how he most frequently referred to himself while he was ministering on earth, by calling himself the son of man. And when he called himself this, he was really making a clear reference to certain prophetic son of man spoken of by Daniel the prophet. And when his listeners heard this name, that name, they would have understood that he was referring to himself as the Messiah. And again, as you said, if he had gone around going, I'm Messiah, I'm Messiah, I'm Messiah, well, the Romans would have just really swooped down and gotten him. And he knew that he couldn't misstep. He, I mean, he, first of all, he was son of God. He's not going to misstep, but he knew that his time hadn't come yet. So he was using the prophecies that were spoken of and identifying himself as the Messiah. But yet all through the uh, Renewed Covenant, we see himself clearly identifying himself as Messiah. Calling him, like you said, Son of Man. In John, we see the I Ams. These are clear representations that he is declaring himself not only as Messiah, but literally God in the flesh. And, and so we see this connection of how this comes together. And like you said, uh, Yeshua made it very clear uh that uh, in other ways that he was, in fact, the Messiah, and one of them was that use of the word Son of Man. Now, go on and explain a little bit more about that word, because it, um, we, we now have the Son of Man, but he also calls himself in John the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, we have to understand, there's a Greek understanding of this, but there's also a Hebrew understanding, and we have to look at the really the Hebrew, because what was he? He was Jewish, right? Right. And and so we see here, uh, first, that the word um, in the Greek, word behind it means logos, um, and therefore uh, to the Greek philosophy, the ideal behind logos was to help them interpret its use in John chapter 1. But really, we have to understand that John the writer was not Greek, he was Jewish, and that he had a, uh, he himself was uh, understood the uh, that he was writing to the Jewish people of the diaspora. So while he spoke Greek, this meant that he would need to seek the Hebraic understanding to the word uh, to the word word. So right. why don't you go on to that? And what you have to do is you've got to go back to the kind of an Aramaic, Aramaic paraphrases of the Torah, which were written in the late Second Temple period. And these paraphrases are called teragumim. I can't get that out. Kind of meaning translation. And the teragumins speak of a person who was called in Aramaic as a as a mera, mera, M-E-M-R-A butchering the language today folks i'm so sorry and that's also that word is often translated into english as word so basically it's kind of saying that yeshua was a person sent by god who revealed god but since he was also the creator of the world and he was the object of the patriarch's faith basically it 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 it's used to say he was separate from God, but yet connected to him. Right. And another way of understanding it, too, is what is the word? The word is the Torah. 
So you could, I always like to share with people, it's, it's in other words, you can replace the word word with Torah. So in the beginning was the Torah, and the Torah was with God, and the Torah was God. In other words, in the beginning was Yeshua, Yeshua was with God, and Yeshua was God. Yeshua is the living Torah, the living word. So you see that connection on how it comes together, that he literally is the living word of God. Now, Judy, the last thing that we want to look at here is uh, outside of the name, we also know that both Joseph and Yeshua were going to be known not just by themselves, but through their children. And it's interesting that the last parallel but really between the both of them, uh, we see that, this, that they're known through their children. So with, when Jacob issued his official blessing upon his deathbed, and prophesied, uh, it says, indicated that something about each of the 12 sons of, and their offspring, he said that Joseph himself would not inherit land in the promised land. Instead, he would inherit land through his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Uh, accordingly, we do not uh, speak of the tribe of Joseph. Rather, we speak of the tribe of uh, Ephraim and the tribe of Manasseh, in the same way Joseph is known and recognized through his children, we also see this, uh, it's the same in the spiritual realm for Yeshua, because Yeshua is known through his living offspring, his living followers, so we are really his example of that. Well, and we know he's no longer with us physically on earth, and after his resurrection, he returned to the Father's throne, but yet he's still here. He lives on with us. You know, he says, I'm going to send you the comforter, so through the Ruach HaKodesh, we still have him. So, you know, how do people see Yeshua today? Well, they really see him in the everyday lives of us as believers. Exactly. And so we are his living offspring. So we see these great parallels between the two. And that understanding that it's just more than just their characteristic, there was a parallel in their lives and how Yeshua ben Joseph, in other words, Messiah, son of Joseph, or the Messiah ben Joseph would be a great uh, understanding of what our Messiah would do. Also, Messiah ben David coming in as king and ruler. So we see the connections that Yeshua plays with both of these great men. Now, and we've been talking about how prophecy comes into the names of Joseph, the names right. of Yeshua, you know, how prophecy fills with all of that. But you did a little teaser in right. earlier, and what we were talking, what we were referencing, that I never said we need to get to now, is basically this week, this past week, the EU, the European U Union, redraws Israel's borders to the 1949 lines. Now, why 1949? That's interesting they picked that. Did it say 1949? 49 lines. So the, the 49... Armist armistic lines. Right. So that means it's the original 1948 lines, which goes into 1949 with the uh, dividing out of the land. So they're doing it. That means that most of Jerusalem is now... Palestinian. Well, it says the, the European Union has issued orders forbidding its member states from cooperating, transferring funds, giving scholarships or research grants to bodies in Judea and Samaria, eastern Jerusalem, and even the Golan Heights. And this actually goes into effect Friday, July 18th. Right. So it's when it went into uh, effect. Right. So we actually see it taking effect now. And what this basically does is there are no people within that area are now not able to sell and trade with the EU. Is this the start of the nations turning their back on Israel? How do you hurt a country? You do them economically. And this is a big step. Here's the other issue now. You can mark this. July 18th, 2013. Watch what starts happening to the European nations with their governments. I guarantee you, you're going to see economies starting to fail. Why? Because they're cursing Israel. They're going against God. And guess what happens? We already know the, the consequences. When you bless God, you're blessed. And when you're cursed, God, you're cursed. You know, it's interesting, Judah, I was already reading this week that some of the nations are getting downplayed again on their grades. God knows what's going on in advance. He, this was taking place already, and it's already happening. I'm not one of these, you know, who done it, you know, but we know that God did do it and will do it, and that's what we have to watch. And so I want to encourage you, 
Remember that scripture to bless Israel and you get blessed. You can also bless Israel by blessing this ministry. We are a listener-supported show. We appreciate all that you can do to help us so we can continue to spread the word. You can watch us on YouTube, Vimeo, YouTube. I said YouTube twice. Uh, with, uh, Cross TV, <laughs> Roku. Roku. And uh, catch us on uh, Facebook as well. Until next week, this is Rabbi Scott. And Judy. Saying shalom and pray for the peace of Jerusalem.